Okay, welcome to this quick start video. In this video, I'm going to go over the Aruba CX 8360 V2 switch series. So the Aruba CX 8360 switch series has been on our portfolio for quite a while. We've, uh, of course, recently released a V2 version of the 8360 switch series. Of course, as you can see here, there's a number of different form factors that this switch comes in. So it provides us with a lot of flexibility with regards to the particular demands of each uh, environment. Um, these switches do support a, a non-blocking architecture. Uh, like we would expect in the data center, they support the network analytics engine, but also VSX for high availability. And of course, they uh, support the, the feature set that we'd expect in the data center. So the layer two and layer three features being OSPF, BGP, uh, static VXLAN, PVST, et cetera. Uh, and of course, these are uh, high available switches with hot swappable uh, pan, uh, power supplies and fan trays. And of course, we have various options on these models which support either port to power airflow or power to port airflow. Uh, you'll notice that with 10.9, we implemented unsupported transceiver mode for uh, speeds all the way up to 100 gig on the 8360, the 8325, and the 10K. Taking a little bit closer look at the 8360 switch series themselves, like I mentioned, there's a, there's a number of different form factors giving us a lot of flexibility with regards to deployments. Uh, we have the 8360-12C, which supports 12 ports of 100 gig QSFB 28. We have the 8360-48YC. So this is 48 ports of 25 gig SFP 28 ports, but it also has six uplinks. These are 100 gig uplinks using QSFP 28. We have uh, the 8360-32Y-4C and the 16Y-2C. So this is a 32 port 25 gig model with 400 gig uplinks, or of course the smaller version of it is the 16 port model that also has 200 gig uplinks. And, uh, you know, not surprisingly, we have a, a high copper uh, base T model. So this is 48 ports of 10 gig base T, as well as four ports of 100 gig QSFP 28. And then finally, we have a small uh, SFP Plus model that supports up to 24 ports of SFP connectivity, as well as two ports of 100 gig connectivity. Taking a little bit closer look at the switch series, the front panel on the switch series is very similar to, uh, to, all, the, uh, to, to all the other models. Of course, we've got our front panel ports, which will vary depending on the model. Um, but each of the front panels of these switches is going to have a uh, out-of-band management port. It's going to have a USB type A port, which is labeled here as the aux port. Uh, it's going to have a luggage tab, of course, and a USB-C console port, as well as the system LEDs and the, and the port mode buttons for those LEDs. Uh, I wanted to highlight the uh, 48Y6C model. So this is the larger model that supports up to 25 gig, uh, 48 ports of 25 gig connectivity, uh, as well as 40 and 100 gig connectivity. Um, but this model also does have MACSEC capable ports. So you'll notice that the four ports on the far left, the 25 gig ports are all MACSEC capable. And then the two ports on the far right, ports 53 and 54, the 100 gig ports are also MACSEC capable. Um, this switch also supports 50 gig. So we now uh, are able to leverage 50 gig optics in the bottom row only. And those 50 gig optics do not work on the MACSEC ports. So you'll notice that those, those uh, are abstracted. And so it supports a, a total of 22 ports at 50 gig. Now, you know, the main difference between the 8360 V2 series and the V1 series is the fact that in the V2 series, we're using the Tele 2 ASIC now. Um, so we were, uh, and, and the one other difference is the 48 port model actually leverages two Tele 2 ASICs, which are uh, configured side by side, as you see here. But all the other switches in the 8360 switch series look very similar, except, of course, they support a single Tele, 1 ASIC, a Tele 2 ASIC. Again, showing uh, kind of like a summary slide to highlight the, uh, the differences between the uh, six uh, models of the 8360 V2. 
Um, and of course the base SKU, which is not orderable. And then of course the bundle SKUs for port to power or power to port options. Um, really the main thing I think we'll notice here is now, of course, these switches support 50 gigs. So uh, the 836048Y6C on the far left supports 22 ports of 50 gig. Again, those are all in the bottom row and that upper port that corresponds to it should not be used. Uh, and then, of course, we've got two other models, the 32Y4C and the 16Y2C, which also support uh, 50 gig. Again, only in the bottom row and not on the MaxSec port. So that's why you'll see that the 32YC supports 14 ports of 50 gig, while the 16YC, that one doesn't have any MaxSec ports. So that supports uh, 50 gig on all ports on the bottom row. And kind of like I already mentioned, uh, this uh, these switches leverage the Tele2 ASIC. Uh, the 48 port model supports two Tele2 ASICs. All models have a 32 megabyte packet buffer, uh, as well as a uh, uh, 1.8 gig core uh, CPU. Another thing to highlight uh, with the 8360 switch series is the table scale that we can support on the 8360 switch series. So these are uh, our common data center uh, platforms uh, on the screen in front of you. Of course, the 8360 switch series is listed on the left in the orange. <clears throat> and you can see we could support upwards of 4,000 VLANs, but up also upwards of 212 MAC tables, MAC addresses. 145,000 uh, ARC tables, or even upwards of 600,000 uh, layer three routing tables. So IPv4, IPv6 routing tables. So this series does provide us with a lot of scale for demanding environments. Um, another thing to note is that with 10.9 uh, uh, and 10.9, 10.10, we uh, enabled support for the 50 gig transceivers and DACs. These are, of course, only on the V2 models, and these are not. Uh, these are only supported in the non-MaxSec MaxSec ports, and only on the bottom row. Um, the 8360 switch series does not support the use of 10 gig LRM. And uh, when we're talking about splitting these ports with 10.6 and previous, a reboot was required, but 10.7 now allows us uh, to split a port without forcing a reboot. But take note that that 48 port uh, base T model doesn't support splitting. <clears throat> and of course the HIT split cables are supported. And uh, I've already mentioned that, uh, um, uh, well, all ports on these switches can actually support the speed being set independently, uh, except those MACSEC ports. So take note of those four ports, uh, ports one through four, on the 32Y and 48Y model, uh, as well as, uh, of course, ports 53 and 54. Those ports must all be operating uh, at the same speed setting. Uh, and I, I wanted to highlight, of course, the transceivers and DACs so that you have that in your back pocket, which are supported on these switches. Um, not surprisingly here, we're looking at the 100 gig transceivers and DACs supported across the whole platform series. Just take note that that, that uh, base T model, the 48Y, uh, the 48XT 4C model uh, does not support splitting uh, those 100 gig ports. So it doesn't support breaking those out. That's why you see the nose down there for those uh, breakout cables. Uh, and then of course, we now support 50 gig, 50 gig transceivers and 50 gig DACs. Um, you'll see here, those are only supported on the three models in the center there. So the 48Y6C, the 32Y4C, and the 16Y2C. Uh, again, very similar to the 100 gig one. These are, of course, the 40 gig optics and transceivers and DACs that are supported. Uh, but just like that 100 gig option, that 48 base T model uh, does not support splitting. And then, of course, we've got our 25 gig transceivers and DACs, which are supported across uh, the models that do support 25 gig connectivity. So the 48Y6C, the 32Y4C, and the 16Y2C. Uh, and of course, we support the, uh, the 1 and 10 gig transceivers and DACs that you see listed here. Um, of course, the base T model is a base T model, so it doesn't support those. And the uh, 100 gig model only really supports 100 gig and four, uh, 40 gig. So that's why you'll see no listed there. 
And finally, I wanted to, you know, just put a, a simple table together showing the splitter cable options for these switches. Um, of course, we can support uh, four by 25 gig breakout attached cables or four by 10 gig breakout attached cables. And then of course we have the optical splitter options where we can use MPO to uh, four by LC connectors, both in a five meter or 15 meter uh, optical splitter connection to actually optically split these out, as well as the uh, HIT optical splitters, uh, optical cables that we see at the bottom. And again, just not surprisingly that 48 port base T model does not support splitting. So that was a brief introduction to the 8360. I hope that was helpful for you and uh, have a good day.